Okay, so we've got our valid guess written. And if you're like me, I'm a simple man. Um, it starts to get overwhelming when you start to do a bunch of stuff in a program. But if you take it and break it down to its individual line and just look at what that line is doing or think about what that line is doing as you're writing it, it's not that bad. You write this, uh, you know, these programs a little bit at a time and all together it builds into something you know, really impressive. And so we can test this valid guess by just popping in a guess and then a string of letters guess. So if I, if I pop in, if I say, um, let's call the, the valid guess method and I'll just substitute in here. So ht dot valid guess and I'm gonna pass in, it wants, it's even telling me my own method. It wants a guess and a string of letters guess. So I'll say the guess is uh, a one and the string of letters guess doesn't matter, A, B, C. All right, so let's try running this and see what happens. And it's gonna yell at me because I'm missing a parenthesis. Now, how do I see that, by the way? I can double click on the line, it'll take me to the line. I can go in here and a lot of times it'll give me a little help, um, but here it's just telling me add a parenthesis, perfect. Add that in, let's try running again. And it says, sorry, the guess needs to be a letter, false. Okay, let's try passing in, let's run this again and try passing in two letters, A, B. And it says, sorry, the guess can only be one letter. Okay, notice it didn't tell me that I already had guessed an A and a B because we set it up in that if else if format where it'll go look at the first thing. And if the first thing is false, sorry, if the first thing is true, excuse me, then we're going to go set the result to false, print out the message, and um, then jump out of this if, if else if statement and just continue on. We won't ever even look at these other ones because it's only going to do this else if this statement is true. And it's bothering me that there's not periods on each of those sentences, so I'm going to add that in. Okay, so let's run this one more time. Uh, whoops. I want to pass in, let's just try doing an A with the ABC. And it says, sorry, you already guessed that letter. So now I've tested each of those things and um, it looks like it's working good. And so I'll move on to my third uh, method in here. So drop down, whoops, drop down. Let's see if I can guess what method I want. It's not that good. Uh, the third one was to update the word. So I'm gonna get this signature that we've agreed upon and I'm going to come in here and write a method that takes care of updating the word. So they're gonna pass me which letters have been guessed and then the solution. And so what I wanna do is I've got that solution that's going to have all the letters. And I want to see, is what they've guessed in the solution? And if so, I'm going to print those words. One of the dilemmas, the reason I'm doing it this way, is what happens if there's more than one letter of the same letter? So there's two S's or two A's or whatever. This is going to be a simpler way to handle this. But obviously, we can handle this in multiple different ways. Um, and so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, uh, I've got the, the, the solution. I've got the letters guessed. I want to go through the solution one character at a time and see if the letter that's at that spot matches something that's in the letters guessed. And so the first thing I'm gonna need is a little for loop. So I'm gonna start a loop beginning at spot zero and going up to the length of not letters guessed Dot net. Uh, we want the solution dot length. So I'm going to go through the solution one character at a time. And then um, my thought is what we'll do is we'll, we'll print it um, one letter at a time. We'll add it to what's going to eventually be our result. So again, I can just put in here a string. I can call it result. It doesn't matter that this one was called result up here because they exist in different spaces. There's other people named Spencer, they're not me, right? And I'm not them. 
we exist in different scopes. This result exists between this brace and this brace. This result exists between this brace and this brace. And I could I do something more descriptive? I could, but a lot of times in these methods that we're, we're calling, um, it works just fine because we're really gonna be just, I mean, it's, it's short. We declared it here, we're, we're getting it here, and everybody you know, knows what a result is, and so I think it works well. But uh, obviously, you can name it something different if you want to. At first, I'm gonna have the result be blank. We always ought to initialize our variables to something so they're not holding a null. All right, so I'm gonna come into the, the and eventually I'm gonna return the result. I can add that in there if I want to, um, to, to send back the updated word to print out. All right, so what, I'm, what my thought is this. As I come in, I want to look at the first letter in the word. So I can do that easy enough by going to solution element uh, zero is the first letter. And then the next time I want to look at the second letter and then the third letter and then the fourth letter. And so this variable i is just incrementing each time by one. So it first holds a zero, then a one, then a two. Every time it hits the end of the loop, it gets incremented by one to whatever it is next. And so I say, instead of using zero there, if I use I, then as we go through the loop, it'll be solution zero. Then the next time it'll be solution one. Then the next time it'll be solution two in this loop. What do I want to do with that specific character? I want to see if it's in the list of letters guessed. And so I can say if letters guessed, just like we did up above, dot contains whatever is in that spot in the solution string. So if I found the letter in there, then what I want to do is print that letter. So I'm going to go to my result string, not print it, but add it to the, the result. And I'm going to actually take whatever result was, and I can do this with the plus equals, and add the um, the guess that's there at solution element i. Does that make sense? So if there were, if I found an a in the solution and it was in the letters guessed, then I'm going to print the a at that spot. Otherwise, so else, if it wasn't found, so if the letter that that had been guessed, if, if I'm at this spot, wherever I'm at in the solution array, they haven't guessed it yet. It's not in this letters guessed string. Then what I can do is instead, I'll take the result and add to it. So I can do the plus equals, or if it makes more sense to you, equals whatever result already was, plus just an underscore. Okay, or if we follow this same format, it does exactly the same thing here. I can say plus equals the underscore. And so wherever it didn't find a letter, uh, was the letter in the list already, uh, was it, how do I say this? Was the letter, was the letter in the list? Is the letter in the list? Let's see. Is the letter in the list? All right. If it is, then we're going to add it to, to print. Otherwise, we're going to do an underscore. And then what's going to come out of this is the result. And so if I pass in um, the, the list of letters guessed and then the solution. So if I come in here to test this out and say, um, so what was the name of the method? Update word. So update word. And I pass in uh, the solution, I think is what we're looking for first, right? So this, no, it's the letters guessed first. So let's do ABC. And then I'll pick a word here that has to have an A in it for this to work. So I'm going to say, oh shoot, running out of time. Savings is the word I'm seeing here on my desk. Lots of savings. And then I run this. Then when I print it, it's going to drop that A in that spot and Everywhere else, it's going to have that underscore look like we typically would get in Hangman. All right, so in the next video, we'll actually move over to Team 1 and see what they're up to. Spencer, out.